Good morning, good morning. Get my dad on the phone with us. Gotta remember the number all of a sudden. <laughs> Went blank. Oh, uh, yeah. Your okay. call cannot be completed. Well, we'll try it again. Good morning, everybody. Shirley's on. Sure I will. There we go. <clears throat> Hi, Jen Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. There's Debbie. And there's our other Debbie and Eileen. Good morning. Okay. Well, good morning. You sound bright-eyed and bushy-tailed this morning. No, I'm up and down. Well, good deal. We all went yeah. to a wedding yesterday and... So we're, yeah. I've already hit the button, Dad, so we're live on uh, uh, Bible okay. study. So okay. we're going to get going, and <clears throat> I just want to thank Debbie Nolan uh, for giving me a whole week's break. I know I've got another week coming up here, first part of August, that I'll be talking to her about, but y'all just don't know what a blessing it is. Well, yes, you do. You guys know better than I know what a blessing it is to have her teach, because her teachings are amazing. Most of the time, I, I'm doing things where I can go back and I can re-listen. I didn't get a chance to do that this time. I think I only got to listen to two days' worth. But I'm telling you, the comments alone showed me how wonderful her teaching is. It always is. She puts her heart and soul into it, and she does the research. And I just can't thank, I can't thank God enough for sending me someone with his heart to do this for all of us. I'm just telling y'all. And thank you guys for encouraging her. Thank you so much for accepting the differences in us. Debbie and I know that together we're so much better because she uh, um, uh, brings to me the strengths I need in, in the areas that I'm challenged. And I feel like maybe perhaps I do the same thing with her. And so that's God's way, is that together we're better. He created us for fellowship. He created us to help one another. And um, we're on July the 19th of 2021. We're reading in 1 Chronicles chapter 28 and 29 today. And oftentimes when I'm doing the Bible study, it's to encourage you, first of all, to read for yourself. I, I can't say enough about the difference in my life if I go back to that day, 19 years ago, when I picked up the very first <clears throat> one-year Bible, knowing that I was at a place that I, I didn't know how to read the Bible every day, I'd already gone through the routine of saying, laying it on my lap and saying, okay, Lord, wherever it opens, I know you got a word for me and just letting it fall open. I really literally did that, guys. I, I'm not just saying that. And for weeks and weeks, I mean, it's like, when I would do that, God had something for me. And of course, now I know from reading the Bible that his word never returns void. But there, I reached a point in time where I just felt like I wasn't, It was, I, I just knew I was without guidance, I guess. And I found this one-year Bible. It's a 365-day Bible. It's by Tyndale. This is just one cover. It, they have many covers. They have many translations. Then all of a sudden, every morning when I woke up, I knew exactly where I was going to read. And it's an Old Testament, a New Testament, a Psalms, and a Proverbs. And if I compare my life today to where I was 19 years ago when I first started that, you wouldn't even recognize me. To, to put the whole Bible together in context, from front cover to back cover, there just are no words that I can describe what takes place when you're willing to make that kind of a sacrifice and do that. I just, I just can't even begin to tell you. And it doesn't replace in-depth Bible study. This is our daily Bible reading. And so today is a perfect example. <clears throat> and when I started doing this format of doing this morning Bible study, God had called me away from a government career 
that I was doing extremely well with, that I had a, an even brighter future ahead of me. And God said, go, I send you out like a lamb among wolves. That's Luke chapter 10, verse three, by the way. Um, and, and walked away from that security um, and started a brand new business that I wasn't experienced in, that I had no experience in. Um, when, when God called me to do that, um, I, I knew that I was supposed to start my morning in the Word. And when I reached a level where I was able to hire some team members with me, I, God made it abundantly clear that we were to start in the Word, that this is His business. He has built this business from the ground floor up. Um, it's a true miracle that here we are 11 years later and we're still here. Um, and so it started to encourage the team members that was on my team for them to get into the Word. I was already reading the Word. I, I was already into this reading plan, <clears throat> and it was to encourage them to do it. And then, as you guys know the story, uh, my mom wanted to listen in, my sister, and then next thing you know, on a teleconference before we had these videos, we had like 30 different states that was calling in and listening in and and then move forward a bit and somebody said something about, well, there's those Facebook Live videos and I don't think I even knew what Facebook Live was at the time and then there's YouTube and so here we are. So this is why we're here, but the purpose is still the same. It's not to, to you know, click a couple of buttons and get on and say, oh, okay, I wanna hear what Debbie says today. It's not, I want to click a couple of buttons and get on and say, oh, I want to hear what Elizabeth says today. No, it's to encourage you. It's to encourage you. He's no respecter of persons. Not one word that you read in his Bible will return void. Even when you're sitting and reading things like we've read the last couple of days about David and his army and, and the numbers of armies and how they numbered them and um, you know, yesterday's reading could have been extremely tedious. You know, the following were the tribes of Israel. Um, the tribe was Reuben, and the leader was Eleazar. Uh, the tribe was Simeon, and the, uh, the leader was somebody, I can't pronounce his name. I, when you read that, it can be tedious. But I share what I get out of it, not because it's about me, but because I want to encourage you that he's no respecter of persons. And as I get things that apply to my life right now today, then you've got the hope and you know that if you happen to be one of those ones reading the, the from the clan of uh, uh, Izar came Kenaniah. He and his sons were given administrative responsibilities over Israel. From the clan of Hebron came Hashabiah. And he and his relatives, 1,700 capable men, if you're at that place where you're reading that and you're going, oh, oh, do I have to? Do I, is there anything that's going to come out of this? I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you and I will encourage you with my story, my life, my transparency of my life. So right now, today, today, yesterday, the day before, let me tell you what happened in the, in the book of Chronicles, the first book of Chronicles for me. You know, this is the second time this year that we're reading about King David. His story is spelled out in great detail in the book of Samuel. And so, you know, even moving into the Chronicles, um, it was like, okay, we're going to read David again. I, now, David's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite characters in the Bible because David is one of the ones that helped me get set free of a life of bondage to sin, of living a life that was not pleasing to God and realizing the grace that we're actually learning about in Romans that we're going to get to here in just a moment. <clears throat> And so because David, you know, committed the sins he committed, because David wasn't perfect, and yet God, to this day, to this day, July 19th of 2021, describes David as the man after his own heart. I realized that if David could sin and could do the things he did and commit murder that resulted in the death of his baby, that, you know... Um, all the things that if God could forgive him before Jesus Christ, then surely, surely God could forgive me. 
And of course, it was never an issue for God of his forgiveness for me because that was done over 2,000 years ago. But it was really me walking through forgiving myself, learning to forgive myself. So here we are today, July the 19th, been reading about David and his armies. And I, I was reading, and this is where I'm at today. God is stirring and moving in brand new powerful ways. Our ministry is growing. Uh, our ministry is growing a whole lot thanks to the people on this uh, video and those that, you, that will listen later on to this video for the um, wonderful, wonderful offerings that you guys have been sending in to our ministry. <clears throat> and we have identified six different branches of this ministry that I've had six different leaders. Actually, it's more than that um, because we have two sets of couples over our couples ministries um, that have stepped up and said, yes, yes, here I am, Lord, use me. And we had our very first high-level leadership meeting yesterday with these volunteers that of their own accord, from their own direction from the Lord, has said we're going to grow. And, and we are growing. And it's not going to be Elizabeth. It's going to be uh, starting with these um, 10 people in the beginning, and we're going to move beyond. So um, this is happening. And God has done such a work in my heart to prepare me for this this place in time, I had to get over a whole bunch of stuff to get there. I'm just telling you, just being real with you. And so because we're growing, um, we're going to have a greater need for Bibles. We're going to have a greater need for a lot of things. Um, and I'll be talking specifically about that coming up. Opportunities for you guys to sow into the growth of this ministry. Um, and uh, I appreciate that very much. But uh, part of my preparation, part of my growth was alongside of that, guys, the business that God created is growing in leaps and bounds. I mean, I just can't begin to tell you the blessings that are happening. And so um, I've had lots of prayers over the last couple of years, really, about, Lord, you know, I'm just one person. I'm just, you know, or I'm just the six people on my team. I'm just the uh, there's just so many of us and there's just so many hours in the day. And, and so God started showing me the path and showing me the way and making, making my way clear, as the Bible says, that he will do. And identified for me um, how to go about asking for volunteers in the leadership roles. And, and, and I'm reading in the Bible over the weekend and through today, and it's like, oh my gosh, that he's spelling it all out right here in front of me. I mean, very specifically, he's he's spelling spelling out the exact path that I'm to take. In that David was just one man, and yet David was the king over all of Israel and Judah. Um, it wasn't a, it wasn't just a, a small job. I mean, did you read about the each tribe having 17,000? This tribe had 22,000. Here's a tribe with 24,000. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven tribes with 24,000 apiece in yesterday's reading. I mean, and I think I'm busy. And I think I'm stretched thin. And, and God spoke to me right where I'm at today and is guiding me through scriptures that I'm telling you six years ago, I was going, oh, I got to read this part of the Old Testament. Oh, how does this apply to me today? And I'm just encouraging you that these words, when you read them with an open heart, when you tell God, show me what you want me to know about today. God, if it's in this book, I know it's on purpose and it's for a reason. I like to say that every I is dotted and every T is crossed on purpose for a purpose and it's for my purpose. It's for my purpose. And so that's sharing with you what the Chronicles have been doing in my life. Let's kind of get in and let's talk about um, some specifics. I'm, I'm gonna read a few of the notes because... <laughs> that I put in my column. I've got notes back to 2017 with some of them because 
again, I can look back and see even the notes I wrote back then and how it leads to where I'm at today. It is so cool. It's why I use the wide margin, wide margin Bibles. Um, that just happens to be the way this one looks. So I highlight, I, I color code. So every color you see represents a different year. And I use the same ink as the color that I highlight in so that it, it shows me how my relationship with the Lord is just building and building and it gets greater and greater. But if it's not working out, it's not the end. If it's not working out, it's not the end. That, I, I could take that and spend the next hour just, just talking about that. But I'll move forward. <clears throat> um, make the call and you will know. Make the call and you will know. I mean, David had to answer the call. David had to make the call. David first had to answer the call. And then David had to make the call. All through here, it's about decisions he made. Make the decision and you will know. Make the There's times in my life when I just think that, oh, I gotta have that, I gotta have that specific word from God. He's gotta speak directly into this right here. And I gotta know that I know that I know. But see, here's the deal, guys. If we really are his, we're his. I couldn't be any more here his right now, this very moment, without this physical body passing away and I'm, I'm in heaven. I'm his. I, I want to I wanna please him more than I want to breathe. I want to do what he wants me to do. And when you are there and you've submitted yourself and you've died to self that it's no longer about your rights, it's no longer about being right, it's no longer about being offended, it's no more about you know what the world says, it's no longer about it's what God says and what God says alone, when you reach that crossroad and there's a decision here and there's a decision here and I can go this way or I can go this way, make the call and it'll work out. Make the call. We can't miss God. Stop worrying that you're going to miss God. Stop worrying. I mean, David completely and totally accepted the fact that as much as he so desired to build the temple for God himself, that it wasn't going to be him. It wasn't going to be him. God chooses who he wants to choose to be the, in the leadership roles. He chooses, God chooses who he wants to be in the leadership roles. God chooses who he wants to be your boss right now today. God chooses who he wants to be your pastor right now today. And you know what? Um, this is such a story of how we walk out our own call on our life. Uh, everybody has a call. Everybody has been gifted and equipped to do the purpose in which you were created for. Um, and sometimes it is to lead something. It is to be the one in charge. It is to be the David, the king of Israel and Judah. It is to be the one. And sometimes... It is to be the worker. Sometimes it is to be the nursery uh, uh, worker. Sometimes it's to be the janitor. Sometimes it's to be the one to dig the ditches. Sometimes it's to be the one that sews the tassels for the, for the veil that's in the temple. Sometimes it's the one to be the mason to do the masonry, masonry work. Sometimes it's the one to be the scribe that sets out the jail, sets on the outside of the dungeon jail cell while Paul transcribes to him. And by transcribed, you understand God speaks through Paul and Paul utters the words from God Almighty that is written down that becomes our New Testament today. Sometimes, sometimes your name is never mentioned. And so here we are, you know, God chose Saul, first of all, just God chose. No rhyme, no reason. He never justifies why he chose Saul. He chose Saul. Now, God is God. Do you think God knew what Saul would end up doing with that kingdom, with that title of king? And then 
What did God do beyond that? He breaks all tradition and he chooses David to be a successor, not Jonathan, not the firstborn of Saul. Broke all tradition, all the rules, all the regulations, and he chose David. And then he also broke tradition and regulations because he chose Solomon. God chose Solomon to follow David in the kingship, not, not David's firstborn. He chose Solomon. God chooses who he wants to choose for the purpose that he has. And so that's you today. If you're listening to me today, that's you. God has chosen you to do the work. And, and, and I know that I know that sitting right here this moment, you can sense it in you. You know that there's something that God's calling you to do. And sometimes it's make the call. Make the call. <clears throat> and so we're looking... Um, um, verse two, David rose to his feet and said, my brothers and my people, it was my desire to build a temple. Verse four, yet the Lord, the God of Israel has chosen me from all my father's family to be king over Israel forever. And then he goes on to say that I'm not going to be the one to build the temple. It's going to be my son. But then look at what he did. So now K K King David is the king. You get that? He says that it was his desire to build the temple. But because God spoke and said, Solomon's going to build the temple, did David just quit? Did he just step back and say, I mean, you know, why do I have to start out as a youth leader instead? I, I, I'm called to be a pastor. I should be the lead pastor. I should graduate high school and be the CEO of a large company. Uh, I... Why, why do I have to come in and sit for hours in training? I mean, I ought to be the trainer. I should be the one doing the training. Well, what do you mean I got to start at that wage? Uh, no, 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 no. I should start at six figures. I mean, after all, I've got a degree. After all, I've got a... Why should I... I mean, why should David do all the work and bring all of the resources together to build God's temple when he's not going to get to be the one to build it? <laughs> verse um, 8, be careful to obey all the commandments of the Lord your God so that you may continue to possess this good land and leave it to your children as a permanent inheritance. I highlighted that. Yes, that is David speaking, but that is God speaking to us today, not to get into legalism. See, we don't obey God's word to get God to approve of us, to get, to get grace. We obey God's word because we love him. And because when we choose him and we give ourselves to him, then that becomes who we are and all of the unrighteousness falls off of us because of the righteousness that he imputes inside of us. It's his righteousness that lives in us that helps us then move forward in grace in mercy, in power, to live a holy life. Be careful to obey all the commands of the Lord your God so that you may continue to possess the good land. I've said this over and over and over again. When I read possess the land because of the land that I'm giving you this day, that represents all of the promises of God for me in my life right now today. All of the promises. I believe I've got promises of promises from his word that tells me that this ministry is going to grow and we're going to reach more people. We, this is our mission statement. We, we are a healing place for a hurting world. Elizabeth Inman Ministries is a healing place for a hurting world. And through that and by that and because of that, we do retreats across the country. We're doing couples retreats. We're doing leadership retreats, leaders of ministries. We're having our very first leaders um, um, retreat. Uh, we're going to do one day events because we're going to bring men and women together uh, for uh, one day leadership training. We do women's girls, dream big girls retreats in various locations through the country. And we give away hundreds and hundreds of Bibles, soon to be thousands of Bibles for people across this land because they're hurting, because they're hurting, because they need healing. They need restoration. That's the land. When I read this, 
be careful to obey all the commands. That's just a reminder for me to pray and for me to ask God and to listen to what God is telling me and uh, so that I may continue to possess this good land. And then there's a promise beyond that. It will be left to my children. It may be spiritual children, it may be biological children, but it's going to go on beyond me. Oh, I'm taking way too much time because this stuff really spoke to me. <laughs> and then uh, verse 10, I believe it's, no, ver I'm still in verse nine. For the Lord sees every heart and knows every plan and thought. If you seek him, you will find him. See, not everybody has a plan for a ministry, but every person, ha God has a plan for ministry for every person. Not every person has a plan for ministry, but God has a ministry for every person. And it's not going to look like mine. It's, it's not supposed to look like mine. Your ministry may be that you get up today and go to work. Because when you get up today and you go to work, you bring the kingdom of God with you everywhere you go. Peace follows you. Peace goes before you. You may walk into the most chaotic environment. You know, you may be building a new whatever at your job and everything's changing. I sat, I sat next to a woman yesterday telling me about how it's just a brand new administration. They sold the company. It's a brand new company. They're changing everything. All the systems are different. The computer programs are different. It's just chaos. Chaos, she said. Ooh, ooh, excuse me, <clears throat> about to sneeze. <clears throat> um, and you know what the truth is? The truth is, is that when you walk in the door, you bring peace there. Just your presence. It's not what you say. It's not, it's, it's just, it's just who you are because you're full of him. You're full of him. So I'm going to repeat that. For the Lord sees every heart and knows every plan and thought. If you seek him, you will find him. And then verse 11, then David gave Solomon the plans. Verse 14, David gave instructions. <laughs> God has chosen you to do the work. Be strong and do the work. If you seek God, you will find him. That, that's a, that's, that was written three years ago in my Bible. Do you see how that applies to what I've shared with you today? That three years ago, God tells Elizabeth, and I wrote it down in my Bible, from reading these scriptures, God has chosen you to do the work. Be strong and do the work. <clears throat> if you seek God, you will find him. And then I wrote down a new definition of prosperity. When the seeds we sow are harvested by others. Prosperity. When the seeds you sow are harvested by others. <laughs> the world has such a warped definition of prosperity. They make it all about money and material things. When the seeds we sow are harvested by others. Sometimes our ministry is to fulfill the vision given to another. Sometimes... Our ministry is to fulfill the vision given to another. Somebody had a vision to sell our company. Somebody had a vision to allow a takeover to take place and new computer systems are being put in and new systems are in place. Sometimes some people we're used to and familiar with are gone and new people are coming in. Sometimes our ministry is to fulfill the vision given to others. God will always provide enough ahead of time for what he has called you to do. How do I know that? Well, look at what happened in today's reading. So verse 14 is God, God David gave instructions. David gave Solomon the plans. Um, and then David set about to bring all of the resources necessary to build the kingdom right there to that place, and he turned it all over to Solomon to be built by a different person. That's in today's reading. <clears throat> now then, who will give? Who will give? God will always provide enough. So if you get that story, David did the gathering of the resources. He brought the lumber in. He brought the gold in. He brought in all, everything that was necessary. He had the land. He, he, he did the plans. He laid out the plans and he turned it all over to Solomon and said, here, Solomon, this is what you need to build God's temple. Sometimes we sow the seeds that are harvested by others. 
sometimes we go to church and we're the Sunday school teacher. Sometimes we're the nursery worker. Sometimes we go to work and we empty trash cans. It's all part of it. And there's not anything insignificant in the kingdom of God. Then again, David's words in, in, in verse 20, then David continued, be strong. This is a word for you today. This is right now where you're at, what you're facing. I know your son's getting ready to have a procedure. This is your word. Be strong and courageous and just do the work. And just do the work. Don't be afraid or, or discouraged for the Lord God, my God, is with you. <laughs> he will not fail or forsake you. He will see to it that all the work related to the temple of the Lord is finished correctly. He will, he will, he will see to it. God will see to it that all the work is finished and that it'll, it'll be completed correctly. Just make the call. Just make the call. God is clearly chosen as the next king of Israel. God has clearly chosen as the next king of Israel is still young and inexperienced. So that's in chapter 29, verse 1, King David is talking about his son Solomon. My son Solomon, whom God has clearly chosen as the next king of Israel, is still young and inexperienced. I can remember walking into my very first post office as postmaster and having one of the workers go, oh, not only are you female, but you're younger than me. And you're going to be my boss? God has clearly chosen as the next king of Israel, Solomon, and he is still young and inexperienced. That's not our place to question who God puts into authority. It's our, it's our, it's our job to do the work. Sometimes it's getting up and doing the dishes. Sometimes it's getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning and feeding that baby. Sometimes it's getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning and feeding the baby so your wife can sleep. Do the work. Be strong. Be courageous. I have gathered as much as I could for building the temple of my God. <clears throat> That's uh, verse 2. Now there is enough gold, silver, bronze, iron, and wood. I want to repeat what I've already said that God will always provide enough and enough was provided ahead of the uh, ahead of the call when he calls you to do something the worst excuse you can give is oh well I don't have enough money or I don't have enough resources or I don't have enough that's the worst excuse he opened the treasures of heaven to us and we just have to do the work we just have to do the work now then, who will follow my example? Verse five. Now, now then, who will follow my example and give offerings to the Lord today? David gave, in today's standard, he gave billions of his own resources towards the building of the temple. Billions, if you do the math. Do the conversions to today's value. And, and, and again, now then, who will follow my example and give offerings to the Lord today? If you've not given your tithes and offerings this month, then I'm telling you, you have an opportunity, not because of me, not because of my ministry, but because God has laid it on your heart through his word to do the work. You can send your tithes and offering to Elizabeth Inman Ministries, P.O. Box 1149, Sky Took, Oklahoma, 74070. So now then, who will follow my example and give offerings to the Lord today? He's not even talking tithes, guys. He's talking offerings over and above the tithe. And then verse 9, the people rejoiced over the offerings for they had given them freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. And King David was filled with joy. I don't want one penny that you resent sending. Don't do that. Not one penny that you resent. You give freely and joyfully from your heart. But all I've done is taken away the excuse that you don't know where to give. You do know where to give. You do know where to give. God has shown you where you to give. God has already spoken to you where to give. It may be the little widow lady you bumped into at Walmart that you were supposed to buy her groceries. It may be the single mama that, that needed just a little extra boost. It may be that you're supposed to give your car to somebody. <laughs> but, but here's the key. The people rejoiced over the offerings 
for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. They give to the Lord. You give to the Lord. It's not about that single mom. It's not about this ministry. You're giving unto the Lord. And then, and then David's response. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly. O oh Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel, may you be praised forever and ever. Verse 11, yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in the heavens and on earth is yours. O oh Lord, this is your kingdom. We adore you as the one who is over all things. Wealth and honor come from you alone, for you rule over everything. Power and might are in your hand, and at your discretion, people are made great and given strength. This is from the man who didn't get to build the temple. <laughs> I got to move on. I could keep going. I had so much highlighted. I, I, oh, my goodness. David did not put the responsibility on Solomon <clears throat> to have desire for God. He prayed for God to give Solomon the desire to serve God. In his final prayer, he didn't put the responsibility on Solomon. He prayed that God would give Solomon the desire to serve him. What a prayer for our children. We keep wanting to pray that our kids will change, that they'll make the right decision. No, 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 no. Pray that God will put the desire in them. And then Romans. Oh, I, I'm not even going to get to do the, the message today. I'm already over 30 minutes today. It such a powerful, powerful book. Um, I've told you, I've, I've read this particular um, one-year Bible for, for 19 years anyway, best I can tell. I've read the Bible my whole life. There's, there was other times I read all the way through the Bible. I've read Romans, and it's never spoke to me the way it's speaking to me this year. This year, there's just something new. There's just something fresh. There's, this is God's grace. We are reading the very difference in Old Testament versus New Testament. What Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. You want to hear Old Testament? Listen to Old Testament in the Psalms. Uh, Psalms 15, verse 1. Who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord? Who may enter your presence on your holy hill? Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right. And do what is right. Speaking the truth from sincere hearts, those who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. Now you want to hear, you want to hear grace? You want to hear grace? Well, let me, let me read grace to you. Psalms 15 verse 1. Who may worship in your sanctuary? Who may enter your presence on your holy hill? Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right. But, but the difference is, under grace, they do what is right because that's who they are. It's who's inside of them. Now, Old Testament, read, reading Psalms 15 under old, co old, old Covenant attitude, Old Covenant perspective, it's telling them what to do. Read Psalms 15 under grace, and it's telling you what they do because of grace. <laughs> it's so powerful. I mean, when God showed me the contrast using the same scriptures today, it was like, wow. And I know that I got that because of Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 21, uh, verse 7. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. I mean, they bring up a sex offender in front of you and say, you get to choose the life of that sex offender or your life. Which one will you choose? Jesus Christ said, I'll die for him. That's what Jesus Christ said. What will you do? That person that betrayed your, your daughter, who cheated on your daughter, your life or their life, what would you choose? Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though some might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. You cannot be good enough to cause Jesus to die for you. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. Verse 11, so now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God. Put this into context. This is written um, 
after Jesus Christ has already died, but it is written to a brand new church. In fact, the scholars say that this was probably the first written book of the New Testament, that, that the Roman church, which at the time was considered the Catholic church, all they had was Old Testament. All they had was, was what we've been reading in the Chronicles. This was probably the very first book of the New Testament that that church acknowledged and accepted as writings from God. Most of the people on the earth didn't believe in Jesus Christ. They didn't know who he was. They, I mean, we still today have Jews that doesn't believe the Messiah has come. We're not against them. We're for them. They're God's chosen people. <clears throat> and, and so what he's speaking about and since we've been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, we will, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation in our new wonderful relationship with God, our new wonderful relationship with God. Verse 12, when Adam sinned, sin entered the world. I, I mean, this right here shows us what God's been speaking to me for so long that most of our illnesses most of our illnesses are brought on by something spiritual inside of us and not godly spiritual but evil sinful type spiritual things is the result of our bodies breaking down prematurely it's the result of <clears throat> what is it spiritual going on inside of you that you need god's healing for it doesn't i'm not speaking to the person I'm speaking to spiritual things, things of the deep right here. I, I, I just, I, God, I'm just asking you, Lord, to reveal to them, to reveal to them. <laughs> when Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death. Death is the breakdown of our physical body. So, so verse 12, when Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death. So death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. Yes, people sinned even before the law was given, but it was not counted as sin because there was not yet any law to break. We lived 2,000 years on the earth without the law, that nothing was considered sin. Nothing had been labeled as sin. Still everyone died from the time of Adam to the time of Moses. And Moses is the one that wrote the law for us. Even those who did not disobey an explicit commandment of God as Adam did. Now Adam is a symbol, a representation of Christ who was yet to come. I'm telling you guys, press in with these scriptures. Let God give you a new revelation of grace. All condemnation will flee. You'll no longer feel condemned because you're not condemned. <clears throat> Verse 16, and the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of that one man's sin. Oh, oh, just Lord, please help them to get this. For Adam's sin led to condemnation, but God's free gift leads to our being made right with God, even though we are guilty of many sins. Stop judging yourself. Stop condemning yourself. Stop judging other people. The very thing you're judging in somebody else is a reflection of the sin that's inside of you right now today. It's not about rules. It's not about regulations. It's exactly why I open up my Dream Big Retreats and tell you I don't care what denomination you're from. I don't care what religion you're from. I don't care. We're here to love on you. And by loving on you, we will show you Christ because by our love, they'll know we're Christians. No other way. They'll know that we're Christians by our love. Stop beating yourself up. God is not holding your sins against you. You are free from that sin. And that when you let go of condemning yourself and beating yourself up, then all of a sudden your actions will line up with the actions of Christ here on this earth. Jesus was our example. He was perfect. 
He doesn't call us to perfection. He perfects us from the inside out. And it's a process. You're going to fail. You're going to, you're going to fall short. His mercies are new every day, every morning. God's free gift leads to our being made with, right with God, even though we are guilty of many sins. Verse 17, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness. His gift of righteousness. Righteousness is a gift. For all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone, but Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God. See, it's what Jesus did that puts you in right relationship with God. The only thing you're lacking is belief. You have to choose to believe that Jesus Christ dying on the cross once is enough for all your sins from the past and in the future. He doesn't have to come back every single time you sin and die again to cover your sin. <laughs> it's already done. We've already got it, as one of my teachers loves to say. Because one person disobeyed God, many become sinners. But because one other person obeyed God, many will be made righteous. God's law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. But as people sinned more and more, God's wonderful grace become more abundant. We see the work of God's grace through the story of David over and over again, and Jesus hadn't even yet died. God's grace has always been there. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, here we're going to end with this, the best news, the almost too good to be true news, as one of my famous teachers says. Now God's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen and amen. Have a magnificent Monday.